Hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Arsh uh, Shah, Dharma Bhavan Slack. Uh, three years at PL and this is my first talk in the conference. Uh, so I'm a bit scared uh, to a room of big people, but yeah, you've got to start somewhere. We'll see how it goes. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Project uh, Caboose. Uh, we started building it in uh, late February, so it's really only been a, a month and a half of active development. So there's not a lot, but there's still some that uh, I want to talk about and hopefully get feedback on how we can improve it. So what is Caboose? Yeah? Uh, it is a library that can be used as a retrieval client for server applications that, I want, to, that want to retrieve content from the Saturn DCDN network. Alex Kinsler here today already talked uh, about what uh, Saturn is. It's a decentralized CDN with about 2,000 nodes. So there is some work that goes into retrieving content from that network. And Caboose does the heavy lifting uh, for you to enable speedy and reliable downloads from the Saturn network. It allows fetching both, both blocks and cars. Uh, so it supports both the graph as a car API and the block fetch API from uh, Saturn. And it can also, as we'll see, be used as a pretty cool Saturn network measurement tool. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you a diagram because I think that makes it very easy to understand what Caboose is. Uh, yeah. Sorry, just learning the tricks of the trade. But yeah. Uh, so say you have like a normal application, right? And you, and you want to retrieve content from Saturn. What is all the stuff that you, you need to do? Uh, first of all, you need to, oh yeah, should I? Is it, is it, is it visible to you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, great. Uh, what is all the stuff that you need to do to fetch content from Saturn, right? There's 2,000 nodes out there in the wild. You want fast retrievals, you want reliable retrievals. What do you do? So first of all, you need to get a list of L1s, a uh, list of Saturn nodes that you want to talk to from the Saturn orchestrator service. After that, you start sending fetch requests to them because you still don't know anything about who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, etc., who's fast, who's not. So you fetch your blogs, you fetch your cars. Maybe you need to s submit some sort of signed token or signed you can so that Saturn can later then bill you for the amount of retrieval that you've done from the network. So you also need to generate and sign those tokens. After you fetch the content, you measure like observed latency, observed throughput, observed correctness, and then start ranking the nodes based on those parameters. You need to put these nodes ideally on some sort of consistent hashing ring for cache affinity. So think of it this way, like if you, if you talk to different Saturn nodes every time for the same content, you're not going to get the benefit of caching that Saturn provides. So you need some sort of cache affinity as, as well. Uh, you probably want to build some measurements and metrics around how your retrievals from Saturn are doing. So later you can then go complain to the Saturn guys if things are not working out and you already have proof in the form of dashboards. Uh, and then you need to submit retrieval logs to the Saturn network back. Uh, so that Saturn can use those logs to detect like fraudulent Saturn nodes, uh, pay them out if they're acting fair, etc. So as you can see, like it's a, it's a bunch of work, right? And you probably don't want to build this every time into an application if you want to download content from Saturn. So anyone wants to take a guess on what the solution is? Yeah, it's Caboose. So yeah, I mean Caboose is the library that uh, does all this for you, and you can just have a good night's rest. You big. The idea is Caboose is a library that will fetch content from Saturn. It, it, will, it has an internal reputation and ranking algorithm that considers a whole bunch of parameters, such as P95 latency, correctness, throughput, et cetera, to rank the nodes internally. It, it can generate these signed UCANs for you down the line. It doesn't do so so far because there's no need, but it can do so if needed. It, it submits this Prometheus matrix. It does, it does all the consistent hashing for you. It submits retrieval logs to Saturn for you. So uh, the idea is for it to be like a plug and play library so that you, you know, it's, it's very easy to retrieve content from, from Saturn. Uh, if, yeah. So. That's, that's the idea of Caboose. Now, yeah, where are we today? Uh, like I said, we started work in late February, so we have a Golang beta implementation, so you can run Caboose on servers. The Bifrost Gateway is already using it for Project uh, RIA to retrieve content from Saturn, so we actually have Caboose running inside like Bifrost Gateway instances right now as we speak. You can find it on GitHub, Filecoin, Saturn, Caboose. 
Yeah, I mean, I was told that you shouldn't have too much text on slides, so sorry about this. I need to up my meme game is what I've learned from this conference. But <laughs> for now, yeah, for, for now, assume there's a couple of cute, I don't know, cats in there. And uh, yeah, so what does the beta implementation do? Uh, you have like, it does all the consistent hashing of L1s, the ranking for L1 based on observed retrieval latency and correctness. It, it gives some form of failure recovery and backup by like f doing fetch attempts to multiple L1 nodes that it knows about, comprehensive matrix collection, uh, both car and block fetches, uh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, this is stuff that I already talked about, but these are the features we have right now. The thing is like building this client on top of a distributed system where nodes come and go, nodes are reliable, nodes might not, might be slow, is not exactly trivial. There's like a lot of, like we're constantly tuning the ranking algorithm to get like optimal performance out of it. Uh, like consistent hashing, et cetera, works well when there's reliably, like there's low churn in the network. But if, if there's like high churn in the network, some of those nodes are not, as performant as other nodes, et cetera. There's no like perfect algorithm out there today that can like nail this, nail this down for you. So with that caveat, like I'm just giving a high level overview of what we have today, and then just show some numbers on how it's, it's going. And if you feel like part of like I'm part of what I'm saying is incorrect, like feel free to like give feedback later on how we can improve it. And if there is an algorithm out there that can do this for us. Yeah, so the way it works today is we group nodes into different tiers. Each tier is its own consistent hashing ring. Yeah, so imagine like tier one, tier two, tier three of nodes, and each tier is a consistent hashing ring of certain nodes in that tier. Uh, we define tiers based on observed latency. So like a tier, one tier is P95 less than 20, another is P95 less than 50, et cetera. Uh, we always, to, in order to retrieve, we always try nodes from higher tiers before falling back to lower tiers. We also have a parking tier, which is where we like put certain nodes that we still don't know much about. We haven't talked to them much. We don't know about their throughput, latency, et cetera. And we do these performance measurements for the tiers based on like a rolling window of one hour to only consider like recent performance so that the P95 values don't get skewed. You know, if you've done well yesterday, but you're not doing well today, we don't want to talk to you today. And the way, as of today, the way we promote these parking tier nodes to like the higher tiers is by sending 20% of production traffic to these nodes to see how they are performing. The problem with that is that that means that 20% of your production traffic is going to nodes you don't know much about, which hurts performance. So what we are doing to do in the next iteration, uh, I know Will wants this ASAP. We'll just have some patience. We'll get it done ASAP. So, <laughs> Is like we're gonna mirror X percent of uh, we are going to mirror X percent of production traffic to these parking tier nodes, so they're not on the critical part to serving like by frost traffic. But we, as we gradually find out more about them, we we can either kick them out, or we can promote them to the to the the tier they really belong to. Earlier we tried this thing of like just having one consistent hashing ring without any tiers and just putting all nodes on it and then assigning them a weight. The thing is, it's very hard to figure out like what weighing algorithm to use, how to change those weights, and if you don't get it right, it causes a lot of pool churn because these modes then move around a lot on the ring, which then means that it hits your, hits your cache affinity. Because for the same content, if a node gets moved around in the ring, you end up talking to a different node because you didn't get your weighing algorithm right, which means that the cache hit rates again go down. And we're seeing like better, better numbers with this algorithm. The problem here is still like, we haven't figured out a good way. There's no, there's no inherent load balancing here. You know, so if, if you only have a bunch of good nodes, all your requests will just go to those, those good nodes. And from Bifrost's point of view, it probably makes sense because we want as low latency as possible. But from certain point of view, it could end up blowing the bunch of nodes that are, that are highly performant or end up skewing request flow to only those nodes, which means that they then get paid more than other nodes. So like there is a healthy tension between certain wanting some sort of load balancing and fairness in terms of traffic and Bifrost wanting as low latency as possible. And this is a story that we're still going to work on. You know, if we have a bunch of node operators complaining to us saying I'm getting bombed just because I'm good, like we'll, we'll have to look into it. 
yeah so uh just like so like i said you know it's also a good it also acts as a good network measurement tool because now suddenly i'm sending this fire hose of bifrost traffic to the saturn network and i'm collecting a bunch of metrics and observing how these nodes are behaving so like for example this is the per peer ttfb today for a block fetch for elven cache hits p95 is 90 milliseconds uh, sorry p50 is 90 milliseconds p95 is 386 it's still not great but we are working on number one improving the ranking i'll go uh, and number 2 we also working on certain side to figure out what the bottlenecks are and how we can fix them um these are like for example the peer latency distribution for new york by frost instance and i mean the the peer latency distribution for certain instances as observed by the new york bfrost instance as you can see we do have like we do have like 28 nodes for example whose p95 is less than 200 we have like 50 nodes whose p90 is less than 200 so like it, gathering data like this then allows us to that number one tune our ranking algorithm number two if there are gaps in sedan like say there there is not enough geographical coverage for a particular region in sedan we can then go and fix that as well uh yeah sorry i think this is like all i have for you uh If there's something you think didn't make sense like let me know if there's any feedback let me know any questions uh, yeah thank you Yeah of course Martin So did I understand correctly that this caboose is running inside inside the bifrost gateway it's, it's not running on the endpoints that are actually requesting the data No it's running uh, it's used as a library by the bifrost gateway instance Uh-huh Yeah it's a Go golang by uh, yeah it's a golang library today that runs inside the bifrost binary Okay and and that's the intention like it's not if if I built a decentralized app that runs on um consumer hardware where would caboose live yeah so look if there's as of today we have a go implementation but there, if there's a demand saying i want to start running it in browsers i want a rust implementation we can definitely build it if there are clients who need a rust caboose if our clients who need a J javascript caboose so they can run it in the browser we can build it we okay but that, but that would mean that you would have to duplicate a lot of requests because you're you would issue for for one resource you would issue requests to multiple saturn nodes right uh, not concurrently like right now we go like i issue a request if it fails i go to another node okay i see and then as a second question is um so you you showed the latencies uh, if you can go back sure, uh, one sure. slide and that's from i assume a pretty well connected um bifrost node in it's a bifrost new staging new york instance yeah um I would have expected millisecond latencies and not like a hundred milliseconds. What, Sorry, what's can you, going on there? Can you repeat? I, I would have expected on the order of milliseconds and not a hundred milliseconds. Um, do you have any explanation for yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. The explanation is uh, there are two. One is I think we probably need to do more work on the ranking algorithm in Caboose to to ensure that we like talking to the lowest latency nodes and recording these. So, and the second is like there is a possibility that. we still don't have the required network coverage in saturn to have like low numbers here like maybe there's no saturn instance that close enough to the new york instance but we're digging into it right now like if i give the same talk after a month you'll see better numbers here because this is what we are aggressively working on right now you already know everything man like <laughs> So so the the only other point I was going to make on that graph is so this is just observe time to first byte. So this is not how far away is that but when we're making a HTTP request how long does it take to get the response? Um and so that may be a combination of several factors not just the actual latency uh to the Saturn nodes. So um you know I think there's also you know things looking into the engineex running on those nodes to see if that is introducing latency that leads to these being higher than you might expect I 
I'm just curious, if I were, so to follow up on Martin's request, if I were running a JavaScript client to get to do a, some sort of like trustless request against Saturn, am I correct that I wouldn't need Caboose because they have their own sort of like orchestration or something? Yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily need to replicate Caboose in JavaScript. I think, I'm not sure. Does anyone know the answer to that question? Yeah. Yeah, so this, look, the thing is like, the Saturn orchestration does have its own uh, ranking logic, but like if you look up, if you do a DNS lookup on Saturn, you're just gonna get back one pop. And you say you talk to that pop and that request fails. Then what do you do? It could be that nodes that are getting tested by the orchestrator are behaving well with the orchestrator, but they're not gonna behave with your client, well with your client, for example. So in my mind, like, and this is just my personal opinion, I think like building something like Kavoos into the browser that can do all this heavy lifting will be a more reliable way for faster downloads from Saturn. But we've got we to gotta see, yeah. Okay, to pick, sorry, Hannah, were you done? Okay, to piggyback off that question, thanks, Hannah. Uh, do these peers speak web transport? Uh, no, no, they have the, they have TLS certificates, so you can use HTTPS from the browser to talk to them. Ah, got it. Okay, cool. All right, thank you.